So today I'll teach you the three price action setup you need in the market. Things that you might not have heard before or that people thought wrong to you in the past. So we'll go to them in details. Show you three setups that are really important. Things that I trade myself. Things that are easy to spot but make a big difference in your PNL. And you'll get to fix some mistakes, become better at trading and build a better strategy. So let's dive right in. All right, so let's have a look at the first pattern that we'll look at here for today. And that is the something I trade a lot is engulfing candles plus support and resistance areas. Now, most people, when they look at these engulfing candles, they'll pick any chart, they'll try to find an engulfing candle, and I'll show you why that doesn't work out. I'll give you some examples, but you don't want to do this ever. You don't want to just look at your chart anywhere. It's a big random chart. Go for like engulfing candle somewhere. You want to be able to spot these candles at the right zone because they make sense only with the zones. We cannot really predict any kind of reversal if you have no zone in the market. So let me just pick here a random pair, USD CAD, and I'll take off all indicators and we'll go through an example of how that would look like. And this, by the way, a weekly chart, we're not going to go there because that's very high time frame. But let's say we have a daily chart here and we have this area here that is a, I believe, round number 1.24, 1.25 that held many times in the past. Now, this zone is very good because we had many bounces off of it. And let's say I want to draw a support here. And that's just based on this one. It's based on the past year and, and everything around. Okay, but you see that if you just look at any, any engulfing candle here we have, we have these ones here. Well, we have a engulfing kind of here, not so much. Uh, we have an engulfing, let's see, we have an engulfing over here. This one is engulfing. Now, they, there's some truth to it, but I would much rather look at these engulfing candles here in near zones because they're going to be more reliable, more likely to make a big push, a big move to the other side, the other zone in the market. Of course, everyone taught you that in the past, this is nothing new. I'm not teaching you something that's like revolutionary or anything here, but it's something you got to think about that. Like you can't just pick your favorite candlestick pattern and look at it everywhere in the market. You got to look at it in the right zone, in the right context. Okay. Now I wouldn't trade this daily chart for myself, for example, but let's say I go to one hour chart and see what we have at these zones. So we know these zones were touched in the past. They're not new zones in the market. They're places where the price went many times before. And let's see, so price was over here, one back here. Let's see what price does when it gets to those zones. If we can find some engulfing candles here. Okay, here, this is not really with the zone. We could still trade that, but that's not the point here. Uh, see how this is a very nice here engulfing candle and price goes down. Now we had a big wick, which could have stopped some of us out, depending on how you place your stop loss. But this is still a pretty nice engulfing candle. Look at the move it produced. Uh, this one here it kind of is also, but not very in the zone. Now we have some more filters, of course, around it. But let's look at how this turns out. Of course, if you have a winning trade, you might have two losers. That's fine. That's okay. Here we have let's see Hangoffin candle here. This is a good one. See how price here. It's not a bit outside. It went a little bit beyond just to show us price could go a little bit beyond. Stop out some people, then go back. And then we have this second thing candle here within the trend of going down. So that's a very good one here. Okay, this is a actually a perfect example here. Let's see what else we have here. Okay, now we're getting between the zones. Since we have this engulfing candle here, like you see, this is the one that one is sideways or outside of a zone, a major zone. It's not really going to produce any results. So we go up, we go down, we go up to this point, we go down here. These kind of check pattern here, I'm not going to look at them because I don't really value them. I wouldn't take the old setups to hope price will go back here. That is a small reward to risk. We don't want to take that. Same thing here. Uh, same thing here. These are going to be chopped around a lot. We had a move here, but still. Let's have a look at the next time price gets to a zone. Okay, here we touch here the lower zone. Look at this engulfing candle. This is a good example here. Sure, we had one before that's, I would say, irrelevant. It's very, very tiny, this one. Okay, you can see we have a tiny engulfing candle here. But then the next one here, this one is a good one. Okay, we even have a nice doji here or pin bar. So that's a very good setup. And you see how price pushed right away from there. Okay, went up quite a lot. We have at least two, three. Two, three times the reward to risk here. Here we go back at the zone. So we retest the zone again. Again, these are all places where you can either like take a trade, then you get out, or you can just add to your position. You can be more flexible. You can re-enter the market many times as this goes. Here we're not so much at the zone. Here we are roughly. Okay, these are, of course, we, should, we could filter them out. Price going back here. You can see these are engulfing candles here. You can see these are also, uh, but we have price going back and up again, okay? Again, this is picking the top here. This is very hard to do uh, because we're not at any kind of zone in the market, but we want to try to avoid that. Now, engulfing candles themselves are good, but they're much better with the right zone in the market. Okay, so you want to go maybe two time frames higher, pick the right zone, then look at it for finding trades. Okay, another one here. We touch the zone 
Engulf and Gettle, very nice one. A very big one also. They have to be big and like relevant, these candles. This is a good example here, where price actually bounced quite a bit to go, I would say two, three, four times the reward to risk. Okay, very nice one here. Now again, we have examples of this all along. We could train more of them. Uh, they're not just the, uh, the triangles here. There's a lot more than that. But I just want to show you how these work out with the zones. Okay, if you're not trading something kind of with engulfing candles and zones or some protection patterns and zones, this is something really good. A bit discretionary, but that's a really good pattern to learn and use. Now we need to differentiate something here when it comes to price action patterns, especially engulfing candles. People might think that because you see a big candlestick, like this one over here, that price will go in the direction and continue. But there's something you got to think about, which is the opposite of engulfing candles. They look the same, but they are the opposite. And they're called exhaustion candles. Now what this means is sometimes the market will give you a nice, very big bullish candlestick. Looks awesome, but it's actually going to be the end of a move. And that's because the market is going to be exhausted. Now, if you're going to spot these right, we're going to be clueless when we take trades and see the price not going in your favor. Okay. So what do these look like? Well, they look at, let's see, you have a downtrend, a down move, and you want to trade within the trend. You see a big bearish candlestick. You want to enter the market there, but that's actually an exhaustion candle. So example is, well, these ones kind of are, but not so much. Right over here, can you see how price is going down in a trend? Bearish candlestick one after the other, almost no bullish candlestick ever. And then we have this big push here that price will go down. That's just a very big trap for beginners. They say, oh, there's a big push, big, big sell off, I'm gonna get in, I'll ride the trend, make a lot of profit. Well, it doesn't really work that way. So you'll see when we have a big push like this at the end of a move or somewhere in the trend, usually the next thing that's gonna happen is price will reverse and not go in your favor. Okay, so trying to catch the trend here doesn't work out. We'll talk about the trend in just a few minutes in my next tip. But it's just one that you want to try to avoid. Same thing when you go up. Here you have this bullish candlestick that are going up and up and up. This is actually a good one. See, so we have an engulfing candle. Now a big push. And then price is likely to reverse just after that. And whenever we have these big pushes, you want to be in the market before that. You don't want this candle here to be your justification for going in the market. You want this to be a, a candlestick riding your trade. But not a candlestick that makes you want to go in the market. Okay, ever. Same thing here bearish engulfing we go down we have a nice here wick we go down more as soon as we get this big push it might be a sign that the trend ends right there okay nice pin bars here we're kind of going sideways a little bit more so this concept doesn't really apply but see how this is good we have bullish bullish here bearish bullish 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 we go sick now we start to make some moves now we start to keep going again we go up and up now, this is a case where the market, we get exhausted with the volume here. We have less uh, range in the market, and that shows us here. Kind of a different story, but look at when price does a big candlestick at the end of a move. Like, this could be one. Okay, you want to, you see this, you see price here going bullish. You might think, oh, it's the, the bar stepping in, I'm going to get in the market and ride this trend. It's actually the opposite in this case. See how this works out many times in the market. We've seen this a lot also on the S&P and any kind of index also, because we see the buyers coming in, they push the price higher, then the sellers are stepping in and they bring it back down. This right here was a perfect example. So we have this sort of trend, sort of downtrend going on here in the market where price make these lower lows. And here we are going at the middle of, the, of this range and we kind of have price going down. Then people were all waiting for that break here of the trend. Okay, whether you look at it as a support area from back to somewhere here, the support here at 3,700 or so. When you look at it like this or the, or the trend, the downtrend, we still have here price breaking the zone. People are all gonna wanna sell off. People wanna go in the market, especially when they see this big here bearish candlestick. This is an angle from candle here going down. People want, might wanna sell when this closes, okay? Or whenever they can, they will sell on this candlestick. When it closes or below or somewhere of the sort. But look at how price just does just the exact opposite. Because we have, keep in mind, we had these big bearish candlesticks. It takes some momentum to keep that going. Okay, we, we kind of just like have the market go bearish, bearish, bearish forever. There's going to be a place where the bars will step in. And here is a case of just that. We have a bearish candlestick again, showing us a sign will continue. It's actually just the remaining sellers getting in the market and trying to go back down. But it just won't happen here. Okay, the market is clear, clearly exhausted because we have these big candlesticks. It needs time to recover. And in this case, that's kind of what we see here. Okay, this works a lot. Same thing here. We have a trend to the downside. Then we have this big bearish angle thing candle, which might tell us, oh, price going down, gonna short here. 
it's actually quite the opposite. Price will actually go back up and rally back to the middle of the range here. Not too bad, but you could still be stopped out here if you put your stop loss above the high. Keep that in mind. These are very important. So you don't want to be selling at the top or the bottom of a trend because price is probably just exhausted. Okay. And this brings me to my third point here, which is a very big one. Whenever you trade in the trend, try to look for the first pullback. The first pullback is always going to be the most reliable. The third, fourth, fifth, sixth pullback are going to be probably less reliable. So if you can just pick the first one and that's all you trade, you're going to do very well in the market. And here's what I mean. Let's have a look here at a random pair, AUDGPY. And let's see how we can sort of trade this here. Let's see if we can find a somewhere of a trend. I'm not talking about the market here, I'm talking about a trend. Here we have price being in a range. Okay, so the range is going to be from, let's say we have a range here. This is our low. And let's say we have our high somewhere around here. All right, that is our range. Now when price breaks this range, it's going to make a trend. And then later we wait in the trend to sell or to buy, depending if it's a bearish or a bullish trend, the more chance we have to be wrong in the market. So let's see, whenever price breaks out of the range, here we have a breakout at this candlestick over here. Now price goes sideways a little bit, and then we have this bearish candlestick right over here. Okay, this is a daily chart, still works fine. Let's see if we take a forward, just to give you a bit more context here. Okay, my range is here. Then as soon as price breaks the range, which happened over here, Okay, this is, let's say this is not here or pullback. It's just price breaking, sideways a little bit, then going back down. When's the first pullback? I mean, the first pullback is the one you want to trade. Okay, well, we said this one is not going to be a pullback because it's when price breaks the range. Therefore, this here is price going down. And then this will be your first pullback. Now, if you were to sell here, you have a pretty good chance of having some profits in the market because price actually went back down and gave us a pretty good reward to risk. Okay, look, we could go from all the way here to here. If you were to just pick, like we said before, some sort of bearish candlestick, any kind of pattern, or let's say an engulfing candle, we have one right over here. So I would just be, let's say, shorting just below this candlestick here, which is a bearish engulfing candle. And I put my stop loss just above the high. Here we want to have a sign that price will actually go down. And this all the way to here, whenever we have this big exhaustion candle, the best case scenario here would be 4.81 to 1, which is pretty good. Uh, the worst case is that you close after this big candlestick here. And this is, by the way, an exhaustion candle. So this big bearish candlestick. Price going down, showing us the sellers are in control, but it's actually just the market being exhausted because it went so far down. Then the bar is stepping in, pulling the market back up. Even after this, then you would have a decent 2 to 3 to 1 reward to risk, which is pretty good. Now, if you do the same thing at the second pullback, which the second pullback would be, let's say here, much lower reward to risk. Let's say you were to sell here below. Okay, that gives you less reward to risk. Let's say, and then the third and fourth is just even worse. And then if you sell here, then you're just like in trouble, right? Because price just goes back up from there. So this is an example here. Let's take another one. Let's see if we have a trend on JPUSD, which has been sideways here for actually a while. Ah, oh, actually trending. Good example. So this is the most recent example, okay? So we have price being in a range, this range here from 1.23 to 1.18 or so. And now let's look at what price does when it's breaking out. Okay, so we have the breakout here. Where's the first pullback? First pullback is here. If you can trade this, sell over here, when price pulls back the first time, we have a pretty good reward to risk. Let's go on then a one hour chart. See how we can trade this pullback here. There we go, pullback is here. Oh, we have some nice wicks here, that's good. Okay, we have a few options. We have this one here. Okay, so we have a few options here, but you want to give yourself some room because pullbacks have a, by default, lower win rate. This one I would avoid. I would put my entry just below the low. This one here would not be triggered. I would skip this one, this first trade. Then you will want to enter the market whenever we can be triggered below the low of the candlestick, the next candlestick. So here we have a pin bar, call it how you want. We are here triggered below the low, even if not this one, then this one here triggered below the low. These are bearish signs of reversals. So that's, that's a good thing. Now you don't want to be selling here. This is an exhaustion candle here. So price will go back a little bit on this time frame. It's going to be of course less reliable than an exhaustion on a daily chart, a weekly chart. But it's still the same principle. You want to avoid these kinds of candlesticks. So let's say we sell here. Best case scenario. At the top, we are triggered here. We can have a short. Well, that gives us a pretty good reward to risk. But let's see how, what if we do second pullback on a forward chart? Let's see how that turns out. Okay, second pullback. Well, let's just be generous. Let's see our second pullback is here. Not too bad. Not too bad. We could still take that. Let's see. And then our third pullback. Third pullback is here. And this one is probably going to be stopped out by this over here. Okay. And then if you want to wait, then just worse. Now we come back to retest all the way to the zone or so. Okay. Of course, you have other moves after, but this is what you want to think about. 
The first pullback is always going to be the most reliable. The second one will lose some reliability. Third one will lose even more, and the fourth one, fifth one, these are going to be losing even more reliability in the market. So how does this turn out? Well, let's say we use a strategy where we trail our profit here. And that's going to be a pretty complex example, but let's just go through it, okay? Example where we would trail our stop loss as price moves in our favor within this first pullback. All right, let's have a look at this. So first pullback was over here. We short over here, below the low. We are triggered. Stop loss here beyond the high or beyond the zone just to be safe. We'll just make it where we'd be safe. Here you go. And then we were to risk. Well, we would trail a stop loss. So we don't care about the reward to risk. So I'm just going to close this a little bit here so we can see. All right. So price goes here. Now, as soon as price makes a new low and a lower high and then goes back lower, we'll trail a stop loss. So here's what it looks like. When price makes a new low over here, that's our low just after the trade and then makes a lower high over here, okay? Then goes back lower here, we'll trail our stop loss to that high, okay? And that's logic. We know if price goes back here, our trend is no longer going on. Our trend is neutral now. There's no trend in the market. Therefore, we shouldn't be in the market. So we'll go back here. Price will go here, come back here, go here. We'll move a stop loss there. Now, we repeat the same thing. Price makes a new low, makes a lower high over here, and then makes a new low somewhere here or here, however you want to do it. Then we move a stop loss to here. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. Let's keep going. Price now makes a low here, makes a lower high. We're pretty much good. And then makes a new low. We'll move a stop loss to here. Now, again, we could do it again, like maybe one more time, maybe not, because this one is not obvious to see. So let's say we just don't do it. I'm going to give you here the worst case scenario. If we didn't see that coming and we would still be in the market, we would stepped out at this level here when price comes back here. Now, I don't know about you, but that's pretty good reward to risk. Let's see what that makes. I guess it's okay. 2.9 to 1. Pretty good. Pretty good. Again, it's not the biggest trend here, not the best example, but we can see many examples of this in the market everywhere. And the first pullback is always going to be the best one. If you can trail it long time, if you have a good trend going on, you're going to make a lot of money with those kind of pullback. Okay. Uh, examples of these are everywhere in the market. Now, it will always depend how aggressive you are here on the pullback. If you want to trail it really quickly or you want to give it some room and you want to kind of catch bigger moves in the market, that's, of course, your own strategy. That depends on what you prefer. These were some precision patterns you can use. I think these are the main three ones I use myself and that make a big difference in my trading. Like, you don't need to know all these terms, all these terminologies, all these patterns. If you can know two, three patterns that work really well, you're going to be able to make a lot of money in the market. And that's just based on my own experience of knowing these things. I don't know, like all these patterns, people t tell me sometimes about things that I've never heard of and I don't need them to make money in the market. So hope you like the video today. Hope you got some value out of it. Let me know in the comments below in the comment section. Make sure you're subscribed if it's not done yet. I publish videos like this three times a week. One interview every Sunday, then two videos in the week where I teach you stuff about trading, some tips, strategies, price action, stuff like that. And I'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon. Ciao.